Thanks for coming along on this artistic journey. We'll be doing two-point linear perspective, and this will be in a five-part series. So do all five parts, and you'll understand two-point perspective. This is two-point linear perspective. This is part four of our little series. Um, right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing a building that has varied roof lines, um, five cutouts, five add-ons. We, we have to start out with a block, and then we're just going to add things to it. And uh, this is a great way if you're going to do futuristic uh, type drawings, or if you're going to do uh, castles, or um, even Victorian style homes that have all these little additions and, and varied uh, roof lines and, and differing facades. Uh, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with uh, just a block and then we're just going to add to it. So the first thing we do is we have to establish our vanishing points. Now it's implied that our eye level line is going between here. You don't really need to draw that eye level line because uh, there's a lot of that you were going to be drawing over the top of it and we're going to be erasing quite a bit. And so all I want to do is just so that you understand that your vanishing points have to be level. They have to be along that eye level line. So there's our eye level line. Our vanishing points on either side as far out as we can get them. And the only reason we do that is in case we need to turn and twist. You can paint, uh, take your paper to a board, have your vanishing points way out to the side. So that your object isn't quite as distorted but for this purpose just on either side of the paper it's going to be just fine and uh, here I'm going to start out with my leading edge now you can put it right in the middle but that's kind of boring I'm going to set it off to one side or the other um, I'm just going to do it on on this side and make that line as long as you want to make it this is then going to be the height of our uh, of our initial building, we can add on to it and put some stuff up in there. And then the depth or the, the base of it. And then we establish how wide we want to make this. And this is, again, the base. Uh, we can go beyond this. We can, we can move, uh, add things to it to make it go kind of beyond. It's good if you do anyway. It just you want to vary your sizes. Uh, you know, variety is the spice of life. And yeah, same thing in art. You know, you, you want to have some variety in there. So, very lightly, I know this is a little harder to see uh, because I'm drawing very lightly. But um, there's just so much stuff that we need to erase that I always draw very lightly to begin with. Anyway, uh, you can always go back into it and, and make it a little darker. Now, we have to add something to it. Let's. Let's add like a little porch or a little something kind of stuck onto it. Maybe a little thing that's kind of coming out. Um, if I were to draw a castle, this might be um, my barbican. Maybe a portcullis that's going to be in there. Um, however you want to do it. You, you kind of decide where it's going to go, how far out it's going to come. And uh, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to come out here and say, well, I want it to come this far out. Remember, your vertical lines need to be very, um, very vertical and parallel to your back edges. So whatever your front edge is, your back edge needs to be uh, parallel or vice versa. Uh, or as close as you can get to it. You know, you gotta, you got to make that look kind of believable. Um, and again, you can decide how far over you want that, that porch or portico or gatehouse or whatever it is that you're doing, how, how far you want it to go, you just decide. I want mine about right there. I'm just connect those. So now it looks like we've just added a little block onto the front of our, of our building. Uh, if you were to add a gabled roof to that, you could have a little garage, um, have a little workshop or something that kind of comes out to that. Sometimes on castles, well, we'll do that right up here. Sometimes on castles, there's these little stick-on things, uh, like a little moculation or, or um, you know, something that's kind of stuck onto the side. Let's say I want to put it right there. 
and uh, you can kind of decide on what you want to do with that. Maybe you even want it to go up and above that. You can uh, maybe you want it to come in here like this. Maybe end right there. So part of that is kind of sticking out. Now, once you understand linear perspective, and you understand uh, concept of it, it becomes very, very, very creative, and you can create some wonderful three-dimensional looking images using your newfound skills and perspective. We'll just get more and more complex as we go through this little tutorial. So there's a there's our little add-on, our little addition. Add uh, maybe we want a top over here. We want to add something on top here. We can say, well, maybe our facade is going to go a little higher over here. You know, maybe we're going to have a little tower or something over here. Again, you decide where you want it. Where you how, how big, how tall you want it. How far over you want it to go? For this little tutorial, um, we just need five, five add-ons. So there's an there's three add-ons right there. We need two more. Um, maybe I want to do a, a little little part down here. Maybe I want to do a little piece on the back side. Just gonna go down to there and uh, figure out how far out we want that to come. Maybe we want it down that far. And maybe a little bit further. Like that. Get rid of that edge. Get rid of that. And we don't want it maybe too thick. Maybe about like that. Drop that down there. And maybe we want to put a little gabled roof on that. Um, so, you know, how, how do we do our gable groove? Well, let's, uh, let's find our center. A rectangle, corner to corner, angle to angle. There's our center. Come straight up somewhere along in there. It's where we want our little gable roof to go. We want it to be right there. We've got a parallel line here. We know where our back edge is going to be. Go from the top to the vanishing point. There's a little edge there. Down here. And a little gabled roof. And maybe we want another little gabled roof. Maybe we want it on, on here. Um, figure that out. Go straight up here. And now maybe we want this one tall and thin. Put it up to there. Here to that vanishing point over there. You can put this anywhere you want to. This is the, the creative part. Um, and I'll, I'll show you in uh, number five how you do cylinders in perspective um, using you know that law of ellipses and things like that. But um, let's see, we got four add ons, we need one more add on. Let's put another add-on, maybe sticking out the front on this one. We'll have it right there. And we'll just figure out where that's going to go. Let's have it up a little bit higher. Right there. And uh, we'll, we'll have it sticking out maybe that far. That'll, that'll work. You you decide, you know, you decide where that's gonna go. Let's go out that far. Maybe I want to see that little bit of that edge over there. I could easily have had it come off beyond that as well. And since it's above my eye level line, I'm gonna be able to see that bottom part. So all we've done is the same thing that we did in 
part one of this. It's just We just did blocks. And because they're next to each other, they look like they're kind of attached. Or you can have them kind of stuck into each other. So there's our five additions. Now we need five subtractions. And uh, maybe what I want to do is is make this into a little a little perch. So I might I want might want to come up here and say, well, there's there's one part of my porch, and maybe that's going to come over here. And I've got this little section here, and I'm just really guessing. Uh, there is a, an equation that you can do to make sure that everything is is even and the same. But for right now. Uh, not a big deal you just kind of guess you come in here and say well I, I want this to be that wide you know you can make it that wide if you want to and if you want this other one to look that same width you just come from that corner there to your vanishing point and that's how wide it would be over here so you can make yourself a little mark go straight up now there's our angle there it would go up to somewhere along that edge right there. And now we move straight up here. Now these two are the same width. And uh, go from there to a vanishing point. And voila, there you go. Um, you could if you wanted to. We'll make another little, little piece that comes down here. About this long ruler. Over from there to a vanishing point. And it really is just back and forth. You can even figure out how wide this one is. You can go to your vanishing point, come over here, and make a little mark there, and say, "Well, that's that's how wide it is up here. I'm going to make it the same width back there." And voila! There you go. Uh, maybe you want a little doorway beyond that. So I'm going to come in, put this little line in here. Maybe I want a little doorway right here. Just come up. Maybe uh, that high. And maybe about right in there. Have a little doorway that comes down. Come in there. You see the end of that one back through there. Now this is going to go in. So we have to have it coming in. And you do, there's the thickness of the wall, however you want to do it. You can make it as thick as you want to do it. Um, but the idea is that we're just doing five additions and five cutouts, just to vary this block, just to vary this shape, um, and whatever you want to do to it. Uh, if you want to crenellate things, uh, let's say you want to build a castle and you want some little crenellations. So, like, let's let's put these little crenellations up here at the top, right here. You just need to do these little crenellations, and uh, there's a couple of different things you can do. You can come down here and say, that's how big I want that crenellation, right there. Now, how do you get all the other ones to be the, the same size? Well, in in Linear Perspective 1, we did a little fence post. And if you think about this edge and this edge like a fence post, all you got to do is figure out, okay, where do they end? They're right there, They're ending right there. And we find the center of that little area. So you find your center. There's our center. You go from there to your vanishing point. Along that edge. You go from the top of this one through the center of that one. Top of this one through the center of this one. Where it hits down here, that's where you put your next one. And you just keep doing that. And if you had a big long wall, a big long castle wall, you can make those little crenellations all look like they are the same size. The same distance away from each other by doing something like this. And then you can just say, well, there's the bottom, here's the top. There's the bottom, here's the top. There's the bottom. Let's let's extend this wall out just a little bit further. Let's, let's go to about right there. So there's your crenellations. Whoops, I missed one in here. How did I do that? Top. Bottom. 
Um, uh, bottom. I <laughs> didn't need that section there. Okay. Then you, you decide, well, how, how far down do I want it? You're going to go from the tip of this one to that vanishing point way over there. And you draw it in. And, and you may want to say, well, that's, that's how wide I want to make it. Now you go from this tip to that vanishing point, make a little line, a little dot, a little mark, and all those are going to go the same direction. You can use your, your ruler to your, they're, they're kind of small lines anyway, but. Okay, does that make sense? And so you can do crenellations. Uh, you can do all sorts of little things. If I want to do the same thing over here, you do the same thing over here. Now, I know where my center is, so I don't have to measure it anymore. Here's my center. There's my center right there. Go to my vanishing point. Go down. Go from this edge. Go down. I can come straight across from here like this, and that'll tell me how, how wide it is here to how wide it is over there. So that it's it's a block. It's the same width from one side to the other. And then I can do the same thing on this side. I can go down. You gotta take into consideration the thickness of your pencil and your ruler. I mean, if you're trying to be exact, it really takes some effort to be exact. Now, I know these are going to get really thin, and so I'm just going to do something like this along the way. There's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. And come in there. There. And then this one just comes in, 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 in. So if you want to do uh, these little, little crenellations on there, you know, and you put some, some merlons on there, kind of come up. You know, whatever you want to do. Let's say you want to do a window here. You do the same thing. You just say, well, I want my window to be right here, and I want it to end over here. And then you just go from your vanishing points up this way. And if you want that window to look like you can see inside of it, you just take that corner, the corner that you can see inside of it, and go to your vanishing point over here. And let's say you only want it that wide. You can do that. You are the creator of this little construction here. However you want to do it, it's totally up to you. You know, you could add windows. You could add a window over here. Maybe you want to do little crenellations along here. I mean, it, it is totally up to you what you want to do. I want it to be that wide. Now this one goes below my eye level line, so I might see a little edge of this. Remember, the closer you are to your eye level line, your vanishing point, the more level things become. And the farther out you go, the closer to your vanishing points, the more distorted they become. Kind of like that fisheye lens thing we were talking about earlier. If you're not quite sure about, you know, how something looks, um, 
Take a piece of tracing paper, lay it over the top, try it out. Five add-ons, five subtractions, try that. See where it goes from there. Again, you, you kind of figure out where you want things to go. See the back end to that, so it looks kind of like. I mean, we'd have to extend this out because that corner and this corner have to match, or this one's got to be beyond. But we could do that. Maybe we want an opening back there. goes all the way through your, your roof. You want it like that. Okay, I mean, there's a million and one different things you can do here. What's important is that you're trying out things. You're um, creating your own little space, your own little world. And uh, it can go even as far as doing spaceships. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you how to do cylinders in, uh, in our fifth segment here. But thanks for joining me for this one. Hope you have a nice day. Remember, art makes life better.